again bankrupt. I'm telling you, I'm talking from experience. Therefore, I'm talking, I said, come, let's have a dialogue. Your bishops and popes, His Holiness the Pope, I said, let's have a dialogue. It's a long story. It's another story, another lecture about dialogue between me and the Pope. It's another story. But I said, come, let's talk. Your bishops and your archbishops come talk. Talk to me. Argue and debate with me. Let the people listen and let them make up their minds where truth lies. So it's a time factor. So I'm asking, when was he crucified? Good Friday. Good Friday. It's a Friday. What makes Good Friday good? He said, because Christ died for our sins. When? Friday. Right? Yes, Friday. That's what makes Good Friday good. I said, when was it? In the morning or the afternoon? So the clever man tells me it was in the afternoon. It was about three o'clock that he was put on the cross. And no man is expected to die within three hours on the cross. It was supposed to be a slow, excruciating death. That was the purpose. Not for killing a man. The Phoenicians had pride. You know, spearing the man, he died too soon. Drowning the man, he died too soon. Boiling water, boiling oil, died too soon. Mm -hmm. They wanted somebody to die slowly. The guy is lingering on and on. Three days, four days, five days. Times history records, up to six days the guy would be alive on the cross. It was to be a slow lingering death. That was the purpose of crucifixion. But they say he died. Okay. So, before evening they brought it down. And the Bible tells us, the Jews gave him a Jewial, Jewish burial bath. The ghusal, ghusal, we give to the dead. Then they put 100 pound weight of medicants around him. Like we put camphor to the deceased. 100 pounds weight to put that plastering, 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 100 pounds. That's what the Bible says. 100 pounds weight. And they put shroud around him and they put him into a sepulcher. Sepulcher is not a grave. It's not a grave. It is a big roomy chamber. According to Jim Bishop, a Christian author, in his, in his The Day Christ Died, in the name of his book, he said that this tomb was five foot wide by seven foot high and by 15 feet deep. It was like a big roomy chamber with a ledge or ledges inside. So they put him into that sepulchre and they put a stone in the opening and they went away. And there was a storm, thunderstorm, lightning, earthquake. Shh. Everybody would enjoy a Roman holiday. Everybody runs away home. You don't want to get wet. An earthquake. Shh. All these things to chase people away, giving helping hands if they were there to help him, to secure him, to save him. All right. Let's not go into details. So by the time they brought it, the body down, hurry, hurry, hurry. They were in a hurry to put him up. Now in the Bible, this is, and they were in a hurry to bring him down because of the Sabbath. Because on Friday at sunset, it is the Sabbath. Yamusab. It's the night comes first, then the day. Islam, in Islam, night and day. Ramadan starts. See the moon? Night. Ramadan first night. You see the moon? Ramadan starts. You see the moon? Stop fasting. Same thing to the Jews. At sunset, the day changes. Not the westerner, 12 midnight. Damn it, all you wait till midnight to see the day is changing. But that's your system. That's your system, 12 midnight. You say now it's 12, 1, 1 a.m. 1 a.m. in the morning. So, right. So they brought the body down. And they put the body into the grave. Into the sepulchre. Sepulchre, not a grave. So, Friday night, He's supposed to be in the grave. Saturday morning, the Bible doesn't say when he came out, Saturday morning he's still supposed to be in the grave. Watch my fingers. No tricks of the hand, in the sight of the hand, the, the guy in the circus, you know, he's clowning and he's doing this and that and he's deceiving you with his movements of his fingers. Mm -hmm, no, watch, watch here, watch mine. Friday night, he's supposed to be in the grave. Saturday day, he's still supposed to be in the grave. Saturday night, he's still supposed to be in the grave. Sunday morning, the first day of the week, when Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb, the tomb is empty. This is exactly, I'm reading your Bible, word for word, verse for verse. Friday night, he's supposed to be in the grave. Saturday day, he's supposed to be in the grave. Saturday night, he's still supposed to be in the grave. Sunday morning, the first day of the week, Sunday morning, not Monday. 
Sunday morning, the first day of the week, when Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb, the tomb is empty. So I'm asking, how many days and how many nights? Come, come, look, look. It's very simple. Well, by God, no, if your eyes are not, you're not short-sighted. <laughs> you can see. How many nights and how many days? Huh? Two nights and a day. Look, Friday night, Saturday day, Saturday night, Sunday morning, he's not there. Two nights and a day. What did he say? For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth. He said three and three, three and three. What we see is two and one. I want to know from you Christians whether this two and one and three and three is the same. Do you know, even an Einstein can't help you? No Einstein can help you in this. Look at this man, simple exercise. Two nights and a day. He said three and three. Three and three. He repeats it four times. And he's only giving you two and one. Again, he let you down. Look, there's something wrong. That's what the Muslims trying to tell you. There's something wrong with your reading of this. I'm not saying that your Bible is false. This is wrong. No, 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 no. I don't say that. I said, yeah, I know. you English people, man, you English speaking people, you gave me your Bible in the King James Version and I like that English. I liked it. I like it. And now I read that Bible you gave me and I see that it's exactly opposite of what you're telling me. Believe me, exactly opposite of what you are trying to tell me, I read it. And that's how I understand. So I'm asking you, is this like Jonah or unlike Jonah? Is this three and three? Is this the same as this? I'm asking you. <laughs> what, I'm trying to be clever? Funny? No, that's what I said, look, this is what you are telling me. I read this. This is what I find here. You explain that to me now. You explain that to me. As a Sunday morning, first day of the week, Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb. So I'm asking, why did she go there? The Bible says to anoint him. The Hebrew word anoint is masaha. We do also masah. You know, every Muslim, you make wudu, ablution. And in the ablution, what we do? We wet our hands and what do you call that? Masah. Masah means to rub. In Hebrew, masah means to rub, to anoint. <laughs> so I said, why did this woman go there? He says to anoint him. To rub him. I'm asking, do Jews massage dead bodies after three days? Do they? You Christian, do you massage your dead bodies after three days? No. We are the closest to the Jew, the Muslims, in our ceremonial law. Do we, do, do we Muslims massage the dead bodies after three days? Do we? No. Then why would a woman go along to find a dead rotting body after three days, you know within three hours this rigor mortis sets in. The hardening of the cells. The decomposition starts taking place. In three days time the thing is rotting inside, fermenting inside. Such a rotting body you go and massage it falls to pieces. It will fall to pieces. So what does she want to do? Unless she's looking for a life person. She must be looking for a life person because she was about the only woman besides Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus who had seen the final rites given to Jesus. She was about the only woman. So she knew that she had seen signs of life. If at all if the crucifixion took place, as they say, that she had seen signs of life. That after three days she is returning to give him treatment. She's worried about the stone. That now what am I going to do with the stone? And when she reaches the tomb, pleasantly surprised, she finds the stone was removed. It was already removed. So she looks inside the cave, in the cave, and she finds empty. So she starts to cry. It's an empty climax to what she had expected. Jesus was watching her from wherever he was. Not from heaven, from this earth. You see, this tomb was a privately owned property belonging to Joseph of Arimathea, a very rich, influential Jewish disciple of Jesus who could afford to carve out this big roomy chamber, a sepulchre for himself. Around this sepulchre he had his vegetable garden and his country home, where he went for his holidays, for the weekends with his family. 
It's not out in the bundu that he was planting wheat and corn for other people's sheep and goats to graze upon. He must have his gardener's quarters, people to look after his garden. This is all the scene. And Jesus is there. He sees this woman. He knows who she is. So he comes up to her from behind. And he finds her weeping. So he said, woman, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? Doesn't he know? Doesn't he know? Of course he knows. Then why does he ask such a silly question? No, no, it's not a silly question. Actually, he's pulling her leg, metaphorically. Not physically, metaphorically. He's pulling her leg. He says, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, I'm reading, I'm reading your Bible. She, supposing him to be the gardener.